The Fed has created this entire mess with artificially low rates and cheap money sloshing around everywhere, desperately seeking yield. And every time something blows up they're there with even more liquidity. It is asinine. The Fed is like an arsonist disguised as a firefighter. Every time a fire breaks out they're there to extinguish it, but their tanker truck is filled with more fuel, not suppressors. So they make the fire larger and larger and more destructive, and they stand back and say, we've got plenty more fuel. These guys need to be fired, immediately. Anybody with any bank lending background knows in his, her gut right now that after a decade of low rates and a rapidly evolving real estate and business environment that banks are hiding billions and billions in rotten loans. Loans that might appear solvent but the collateral is depreciated significantly. Just waiting for a push to fall over. If you owe $10,000 to the bank, you have a problem. If you owe $10 million the bank has a problem. If the collateral is heading down the toilet bowl, the banks are left holding a very empty bag. Capital ratios are a joke right now, the banks have been given every leeway to not meet certain requirements to keep the party going. Not the community banks whose required minimum capital ratio is 9%. The giant supposedly too big to fail banks are exempt from 9% and their capital ratios offer no protection to the taxpayer when they go down playing with derivatives. Check out the capital ratios of the giant banks, and you will be shocked. The question that begs to be answered is what is the true value of collateral? With asset values insanely inflated, and banks lending on those assets at market value, when the asset values are revalued at much lower than what the banks assess them at, the banks own a lot of thin air. Collateral value is intrinsic. The question is what is the value of the money relative to collateral, assuming the quality of debt, etc. That value is always different. Musk's collateral is different than Bezos. In the very near future, price-to-book ratios will be all the rage. The quality of collateral, and the money behind the operation, varies from industry to industry. Alan Watts said, the depression was a failure of people to agree that 12 inches equals 1 foot. Is that not always the case? Hence the expression, your money is no good here. Derivatives trades are highly opaque and at the mercy of industry owned and decided by ISDA. Just like CFD, visible few big players. Because trillions involved only very entities are privy to know unless a big shark is in trouble. They will lie and cover over it as long as they can. Deutsche Bank, for example is an insolvent financial institution with enough political connections in Germany to currently keep its doors open, even if grossly in violation of many German and EU banking standards. But it will not be here in two years' time. Wallpapering a decayed edifice is only a very temporary fix until the next storm comes. This is just the tip of the derivatives iceberg, and the US and global financial systems are the titanic headed for certain disaster. It is estimated that the total outstanding financial derivatives in the world are in excess of $400 trillion. If just 3% of these very opaque and highly leveraged instruments implode and lose just 50% of their values in a matter of days, that is $6 trillion coming out of the hides of investment banks, hedge funds, and global investors. Not an insignificant sum. Capital ratios are very thin right now, thank you SEC the Fed, and bank regulators, an oxymoron if there ever was one. That these instruments trade under the radar is not surprising. If the average Joe investor knew how much dynamite was laying on the railroad tracks, he or she would have taken the bus to cash and out long before this. But average Joe is dancing to the tune of record margin debt, so he or she does not want grim reality to ruin the party. But reality is starting to come home. This is just one black swan in a flock of black swans that have the potential to darken the spring sky. The monumental shift in overall confidence in these trades is already underway. The exit door to the burning theater is about to get jammed with nothing done trades. It's almost like this country learned absolutely nothing from the global financial meltdown of 2008. It's too bad the government that represents the citizens won't protect it from these drunk gamblers that give not a damn if they wreck the entire economy in their quest for wealth and power. It's greed and short-term thinking that's leading to our demise. Central banks are buying everything in sight. There is no way to stop this financial theft. Get used to it plebs, we are about to eat much more crow. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. 
Thank you. The visible or measurable size of the derivative market, if you include options, futures, swaps, forex spreads etc., is more than $300 trillion. But there is an invisible or not easy to measure component, which is probably three times larger than $300 trillion. So those two added together, the size of the derivatives markets is approaching $1,200 trillion or $1.2 quadrillion. The total size of the world economy itself is less than $73 trillion. In other words, the derivatives market is more than 10 times larger than the size of the world economy. The derivatives market is, in a word, gigantic. So how can that be? Well largely because there are numerous derivatives in existence, available on virtually every possible type of investment asset, including equities, commodities, bonds, and foreign currency exchange. Some market analysts even place the size of the market at more than 10 times that of the total world gross domestic product GDP. However, other researchers challenge these estimates, arguing of the size of the derivatives market is vastly overstated. Figuring the range of estimates determining the actual size of the derivatives market depends on what a person considers part of the market, and therefore, what figures go into the calculation. The larger estimates come from adding up the notional value of all available derivatives contracts. But some analysts argue that such a calculation doesn't reflect reality, that the notional value of a derivative contract's underlying assets, the financial instruments the derivative is pegged to, does not accurately represent the actual market value of derivative contracts based on those assets. A quick refresher. Derivatives themselves merely contracts between parties. They are speculations, bought or sold as bets on the future price moves of whatever securities they're based on, hence the name, derivative. So derivatives prices are dependent on the prices of their underlying assets. An example that illustrates the vast difference between notional value and actual market value can be found in a popularly traded derivative, interest rate swaps. The large principal amounts of the underlying interest rate instruments, although usually included in the calculation of total swaps value, never actually trade hands. The only money traded in an interest rate swap is the vastly smaller interest payment amounts, sums that are only a fraction of the principal amount. According to the most recent data from the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, the total notional amounts outstanding for contracts in the derivatives market is an estimated $542.4 trillion. But the gross market value of all contracts to be significantly less, approximately $12.7 trillion. The bottom line is, when the actual market value of derivatives, rather than notional value, is the focus, the estimate of the size of the derivatives market changes dramatically. However, by any calculation, the derivatives market is quite sizable and significant in the overall picture of worldwide investments. Derivatives, as the name suggests, they are, derived, products, built upon existing assets and other derivatives. As of now there are thousands of such product categories ranging from simple swaps, futures and options to complex, exotic ones which would give you a good headache trying to figure out what exactly they are. Basically, it's just a huge gamble by the financial community, a bet if you would like. How is the size larger than the entire world economy? Counting the value of the same asset multiple times and using the notional value of the underlying asset rather than the value of the actual transaction. Consider the below. Current oil, Brent, price is at say $100 per barrel. And let's assume there is only one barrel oil in the world. Person A believes the price will go up to $120 in a month. Person B assumes it will go up to $130. Person A gets a future contract to buy it at $115. He pays $1 for the contract rights. Person B gets another at $125, pays $1. Actual value of oil equals $100 value of oil derivatives equals $115 plus $125 plus $1 plus $1 equals $242, 2.42 times. Consider another example, interest rate swap. You take a loan of $1,000. Interest rate is base rate plus 2%. Assume base is 8% currently. So you will be paying 10% effectively. However, there is a risk that the base rate may go up thus making you liable to pay more. So you find someone with a higher risk tolerance and do a swap. He agrees to pay the variable rate, base plus 2%, and you agree to pay fixed 10%. If the variable goes up, he loses. If it goes down, you lose. 
Assume at the end of year 1, base is up to 9%. Now the other person needs to pay you 11% and you have to pay him 10%. Obviously the transaction would be a net and he will pay you 1% i.e. $10. But the calculated, summed notional value of the contract would be 11% plus 10% equals 21% equals $210. So, multiple people own rights over the same underlying assets at the same time and at different points, notional value is used instead of the actual value of the transaction, and, bam! The value of the derivatives market is bigger than 50 times the world economy. The collateral for the global markets, the current value of which is 6 times the global GDP are various, derivatives, built on borrowed debt plus leverage the, assumed, value of the stocks, bonds. This illusion lasts as long as a perception for that is supported by the Fed and other central bankers. The party will go on, not until the punch bowl is taken away. Fed's permanent put is here to continue that. One could argue a number of ways that the only things cheap right now be silver and gold. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.